Even before my voice broke, I turned my back on being a bloke. You see, I grew up in culture stir, where very little culture stirs. A soldier town where cabbies boast, but how they used to beat up blur. And me, in bottle green cords, coming back from after school activities, would see from the windows of my father's Ford what I thought boys all grew up to be. Smash glass valves, pastel polo shirts, the gnarled veterans of a thousand fight nights, mushroom chinos and those blocky arses. Brandishing bottles of Smirnoff ice. Yeah, nice. And at 14, in the flashing lights of the under 18s disco, I saw kids so weighed down with the gold round their neck that they boogied like mini 45 year olds, middle aged teenagers with dragon tats. And it just left me feeling so cold. I thought, I don't want to be like that. So by 16, I was arty. I used to cry at parties and pour out my little artsy-wartsy to girls that listened well. I'm different. No one understands me. That's why I write poetry. Would you like to see? Teenage girls were easy to impress. Just paraphrase the manics and their views on otherness and you'll get your greasy paw and many a nubile breast. But alas, just like a teenage boy in bed, I knew I couldn't last. And after years of avoiding my fellow man, I arrived at an impasse, a university, a Casanova's hell, where all the other girly boys wrote poetry as well. It was like being in a room with 16 me's. I thought Greenpeace had sneezed. <clears throat> Here's a verse about an orphanage I helped build in Belize. It was like an interrogated spotlight and a mirror. I was Dorian in the loft. I was so in touch with my feminine side, I ripped my bollocks off. So, something drastic had to be done. No more Malibu and Coke, no. I had to follow Kylie's bum, yeah. I had to be a bloke. So I sought the company of men. The company of men. Adams, Stewarts, Peters, Craigs, Davids, Barrys, Glens. Not the kind of girly boys they hid behind their fringes. Normal blokes that like football and motor cars and mingers. They all had such gall and the posters on their wall room blazing with such wit. One said, room with a view. But it didn't mean a view, it just meant a big therapy. The company of men. Mine's a lager again. I hope they publish my misogynist joke in next month's FHM and after a while it, it got me thinking you know, what's wrong with this? We all like to go drinking we all stand up, we impress, we're going to hang out you know, get together, shave off our stubble, locating the clitoris what's all that about? Pint of beer make mine a double pint of beer <laughs> who was I kidding? I thought Lucy Pinder was the Minister for Foreign Affairs, although some of the other chaps thought that was a fucking good idea. I just didn't fit in, so I'd flip between nights out chasing skirt and a drunken stupor, and nights in chasing the perfect metaphor, discussing the pros and cons of Booper until the nights in with the girly boys turned into hideous benders, and our search for a shit hot simile ended up with us swinging our members. Ha, have you seen my extended metaphor? And it's in I am big pen tamer. Tom, hurling one-liners at each other with all the restraint of a cab rank punch-up and yet meandering back through the terrace streets at dawn with some chinoed ape pushing along a stolen Tesco trolley. I had sentiments so warm and at times the most precise insights into human folly till I realised that we'd been quibbling over dialects. One guy says tomato, his mate says ketchup, but at heart we're all frightened the same. What's in a polo shirt? What's in a name? The clink of a pint glass, the scratch of a pen, the cry of a baby, the company of men. Cheers.